Uh, as federal agencies face severe funding cuts, observers are sounding the alarm over the impact to government data. More than 90 percent of economists who responded to a recent FT Chicago booth survey say they are worried about reliability going forward. The cuts are already starting to have an effect. The Bureau of Labor Statistics posted a notice last month saying it is reducing its sample collection for inflation data. Volunteers with the Data Rescue Project are rushing to preserve as much data as they can. They say information about health, weather, education, just to name a few, is no longer being published. Sebastian Magistrovich is the co-founder of the Data Rescue Project, and he joins us now. I want to thank you for being here, and we'd really love for you to explain this mission, because it is called a mission, and the so-called army of nerds is what the Financial Times uh, called you guys. You're the Data Rescue Project. Can you explain what needs rescuing here? Absolutely. So I think what most people don't know is that the federal government in the U.S. produces an uh, enormous amount of public data um, that is really a public good that is not just used by uh, scientists, journalists, NGOs, but also businesses across the country and across the globe, actually. And so what the Data Rescue Project is, it's a volunteer initiative mainly run by librarians and data professionals who try to um, save the uh, data that are now being deleted by uh, due to cuts at federal agencies. And so far, we have backed up over 1,000 data sets uh, and several petabytes of public data. Now, in saving these data, these records, explain what difference you hope to make. And, and I want to say you come by this in an, ortho, or an orthodox way. I mean, normally we're talking about trying to save records in war-torn areas. This is the United States that you're talking about now. I mean, what would happen? Why do you believe that data is evaporating from the United States? And, and again, why do you think the United States needs this mission right now compared to the other things that you have done? Well, the thing is that uh, really this uh, deletion and manipulation and censorship of data really goes across the board. As you mentioned, it goes uh, into weather data, climate data, education data, but also economic data. And so uh, when uh, the Census Bureau, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, or for example, the Office of Financial Reporting, can no longer be trusted to uh, uphold the gold standard in data production that they have had so far, that really calls into question uh, whether it is possible to assess the state of the US economy, for example. Uh, and that is relevant uh, for economists, bankers, investors, or rating agencies, for example, to have trust in the data that the government produces. How ironic is it, though, that at one point in time, you'd be doing this for Ukraine, and now you're doing it for the United States. Well, it's ironic, but also, in a, in a sense, it's, um, I think, uh, a testament to uh, what volunteers can do. Because uh, when several years ago, in 2022, we started um, rescuing data, cultural heritage data that was digitized due to the invasion uh, in Ukraine um, by Russia, um, most of our volunteers back then uh, were um, Americans. And so I really feel an obligation as a European that uh, when public data is in danger in the US, now to really you know, give back. And in giving back, I do want to try and get to a concrete example. Like, let's take the climate data, for instance. If that data is not collected, preserved, collated, analyzed, how does it diminish the capacity to prepare and mitigate for climate threats or shocks? Well, um, a few months ago, the New York Times uh, headlined that uh, meteorologists are warning that lives are being put in danger because uh, that data uh, is no longer produced or maintained at the same level that it was before. Um, uh, the, the things that are being cut at, for example, NOAA or the National Weather Service um, are satellite data that are not longer made public at the end of the month, actually. Uh, weather balloons are not started anymore, um, and more than 500 staff at the National Weather Service have been fired or retired, so he can't take care of essential data anymore. And um, that many meteorologists mm -hmm. say that very 
GPT. This is a danger now in coming hurricane season, for example. You know, we do live in this information age. You, you would remember during wars of decades ago, um, people would take, you know, their prized art uh, sculpture and really try and preserve it until the war was over. Do, do you believe this is really in a country's national endowment now, this kind of data, these kind of data sets? Uh, I believe so, because uh, I'm a historian by training, so I'm also very concerned huh. about cultural data. Open data also means um, historical data uh, at the Smithsonian institutions, for example, at the African American Museum there, uh, which has been targeted by executive order, uh, you know, in order to um, get rid of so-called DEI content. Uh, the same thing we are concerned about are uh, the contents of the Library of Congress. So in this day and age, data really is the memory and the public record of a country. And that's why I also think that attacks on public Public data and uh, the knowledge uh, can be compared to digital book burnings. I want to be as crass as that in my assessment. You certainly uh, paint a stark picture there just with that phrase. Uh, thank you so much, Sebastian. Really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me.